This is the Retirement Lifestyle Advocates Radio Program. I'm your host, Dennis Tubergen. Glad you decided to listen in today. Hey, joining me on today's program in segments two and three is best-selling author and economist Harry Dent. I've invited Harry back to give us an update on his forecast for stocks and real estate and bonds. He'll be joining me in segments two and three of today's program. As I said, I'd encourage you to stay tuned for that. You know, it is the month of May, which means that I do have a May special report for you. The May 2023 special report is titled IRA and 401k Strategies. Most people today that are saving for retirement, and I'm going to talk about how those statistics are playing out. If you're wondering how your retirement savings plan is stacking up with the rest of the country, we're going to talk about that in this segment. But first, I'd like to invite you to get this free report titled IRA and 401k Strategies. You can go to requestyourreport.com to request that report. When you do, let me know where to mail the report, and I will mail you the report, as well as a copy of my best-selling revenue sourcing book and the little black book on social security maximization. The IRA and 401k Strategies Report contains strategies to mitigate the tax liability on your retirement account, as well as some investing strategies for today's economy. And uh, given that uh, it appears that even the Fed is now saying that we're likely headed for recession, uh, the uh, timeliness of this report uh, is great. So again, go to requestyourreport.com. I'll be glad to send you a copy of that free report. So if you're wondering how you're doing saving for retirement, I want to talk about that in this segment. If you go back and look at the 2020 census data, that data shows that 58.1% of baby boomers owned a retirement account three years ago when COVID hit. Now, a baby boomer is defined, at least in this particular case, as those born between 1946 and 1964. So if your birth years uh, fall between 1946 and 1964, you are considered to be a baby boomer, at least by this article. There are other uh, sources that define a baby boomer as being born between 1946 and 1960. But here's the point. About 60%, to use round numbers, of baby boomers do not have retirement savings stored in any financial institution. Only about four in 10 boomers, those born between 46 and 64, and if you think about that, that is alarming. Those are people aged really 58 to 78 or so. And in that age group, only 40% have retirement savings. Now, retirement accounts could be a 401k, could be a 403b, could be a 503b, could be a thrift savings plan, could be an IRA or a KEO, could be a traditional defined benefit pension plan that pays you a monthly benefit when you retire, could be a cash balance plan. Whatever the name, of the retirement account, only about 40% of boomers have those accounts. Now, if you take a look at a separate report, and this report was actually assembled by the Transamerica Center for Retirement Studies, it confirms this trend. The report says, quote, Baby boomers have been susceptible to employment risks, volatility in the financial markets, and increasing inflation, all of which disrupted their retirement plans. Certainly, inflation is taking a toll on retirement savings, reducing discretionary income. There are many households that were saving for retirement that now find they need that retirement plan contribution to make ends meet in light of increasing inflation. Then, of course, there's the volatility we've seen in the market over the past 20 years. I would argue that these boom and bust cycles are actually fueled by easy money. That certainly uh, has been the case uh, uh, over the last couple cycles. 
Now, getting back to this Transamerica Center for Retirement Studies, there was an online survey conducted uh, at the end of 2021. So keep in mind, the timing of this study was just as the market was peaking. If you go to retirementlifestyleadvocates.com and listen to the podcast that I did uh, in January of 2022, you'll find that I said the market has likely topped here. So this survey was conducted at about the time the market was topping. So my point is, it was a time that people tended to be more optimistic about the market than they would be having gone through 2022 when both stock funds and bond funds declined. Well, this survey was conducted among about 5,500 workers, age 18 and up. And what it found was 23% of baby boomers feel very confident that they can retire with a comfortable lifestyle. So that's less than one in four. So if you're listening to the program today and you are a baby boomer born between 46 and 64, about one in four to one in five of you, according to this survey, are very confident you can recover, uh, retire rather with a comfortable lifestyle. 48% or about half are somewhat confident. 16% are not too confident and 14% are not all that confident. So here you have in this survey, a third of all those that are of retirement age that say, I'm probably not going to be able to retire. 22% of their surveys said that they are building a large enough retirement nest egg. And 34% says, I'm not building enough of a nest egg. I will probably never be able to retire. Now, even more alarmingly, 85% of baby boomers expect that Social Security will be their primary source of income when they retire. Now, that's a little bit alarming because the average monthly Social Security check to a retired worker in February of 2023 was just under $1,800 a month or just over $21,000 per year. Now, if you compare that with living expenses, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics show that the average American household headed by someone age 65 and over spent an average of about $4,000 a month or $48,000 a year between 2016 and 2020. Now keep in mind, that's before inflation really kicked in in earnest. Now, those nearing retirement between the ages of 55 and 64 spent during this same time frame an average of $65,000 annually. So they spent almost $20,000 a year, a little bit less than that, more than their counterparts who are already retired. Now, in 2021, when you adjust the $4,000 per month for inflation, according to a consumer expenditure survey from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the typical American household spent that was retired spent about $5,000 a month up from $4,000 a month. So that's the toll that inflation is taking on those that are retired and planning to retire. So if you're planning on Social Security as being your primary source of income when you retire and you don't have a nest egg, uh, it is very likely, given the current environment, that you need to implement some strategies to help you get there. And that's what this month's report may help you do. Again, this month's report, if you're just joining us, the May 2023 special report is titled IRA and 401k Strategies. I'd be glad to send you a copy of the report. All you need to do to get your copy is visit requestyourreport.com. And when you get the report, you will get some strategies outlined that will tell you some things that you might consider doing once you've reached the age of 59 and a half. So if you're a boomer, if you have doubts about potentially being able to retire comfortably, get this report, get a second opinion, get some post 59 and a half strategies that you can consider for your situation. So again, 
The website is requestyourreport.com. That is requestyourreport.com. Now, when it comes to Social Security, Dave Goodsell, who is the executive director at the Natixa Center for Investor Insights, it was interviewed by CBS News, and he said that the Social Security Trust Fund is now projected to become depleted in 2020, 2033. That's one year sooner than last year's estimates. And if Congress doesn't do anything, what that would mean is 77% of benefits would be payable at that time. So what that means is a $2,000 a month benefit today would be reduced to something a little bit more than $1,500 a month if Social Security had to be funded through cash flow. Now, what Mr. Goodsell doesn't point out is that the Social Security Trust Fund is a trust fund in name only at this point anyway. So as time passes, if you are a boomer, you will have to take more responsibility for your retirement. You'll have to take more responsibility for the retirement income that you would like to have. And to that end, again, I would invite you to get this month's special report titled IRA and 401k Strategies. Visit requestyourreport.com and let me know where to mail the report, and I'll be very glad to do so. I will be back after these words with my special guest, Mr. Harry Dent. Welcome back to RLA Radio. I'm your host, Dennis Tubergen. Joining me once again on today's program is returning guest, economist Harry Dent. Harry is a prolific author, putting uh, many, many best-selling books uh, on the uh, on the charts over the years, and uh, always appreciate his perspective. So, Harry, welcome back to the program. Yeah, nice to be back, Dennis. So, Harry, let's start by uh, just talking about, I'll call it the elephant in the room. Uh, we have had a number of banking failures. There um, appear to be a few more banks on the ropes. Uh, what's your take? Is this going to continue? Yeah, you know, it, there's always going to be a few to start. And then, and of course, the government can always fix a few. OK, but but no, this you know, this is we, we've added more debt in this cycle since 2009 than we did in the last debt cycle back since 2000 that led to the 2008 nine banking crisis. So there's only, only we're only going to have more debt to unravel and restructure, and we're only going to have a bigger banking crisis this time. So this is just the beginning. And, and, and I think as soon as we see signs that, that now that the Fed has, has been forced to tighten after overeasing, and this was a huge mistake, Dennis, one thing to, to to stimulate for 13 years. It's another reason to ex another thing to accelerate it over a short term virus called COVID. So now they've been forced to tighten, and and this economy cannot stand tightening because it's been living off of stimulus only since 2009. So, so I think we have a slowing of the economy that will cause debt to keep unraveling, and that will keep you know, losses in stock market going down uh, at least well into 2024. So this is just the beginning. And, and what I'm really looking for, Dennis, is we've seen the first crash that tells me the bubble's over. Until you get it, a bubble is not over until stocks crash 30 to 40 percent in a short period of time. 10 or 20 percent never stops a bubble. So the bubble did end last year. We've had a long bounce since then. The 2029 first bounce after the first crash was five months. This is now seven months. So this has really been stretched, too. So I think we're, we're very, very close to entering the next wave down, which and, and, and people should look at their stock charts when I say this, back to the COVID lows, just back to early 2020. That will take the stock market down about 50 percent from here. And that'll take the overall fall down to more like 60 percent from the top. And that's going to cause people to say that's going to cause consumers to say, I don't care what the Fed does with stimulus. Now we're, we're in a downturn and people are going to pull back on spending and, and businesses as well. So I think they're, they're about to lose control. And this whole never ending stimulus thing finally defeats itself because they overdid it, Dennis. They they. Why would you overreact to COVID when everybody knows it's a short-term virus 
and it'll go away on its own, just like influenza did in the same two-year period back in 1918 to 20. It came, it wreaked havoc, and then it went away on its own two years later, you know. And so, so I think that's where we're at. I think uh, we're going to see a, a cra- another crash pretty much for the end of at least October and November this year. And then we're going to, then people are going to know this is not a correction. This is a long-term top. And, and, and I am saying, I don't think I'll see these, the highs we saw in November in the NASDAQ and the early January in the S&P in 2022. I don't think we'll see those highs for the rest of my lifetime, for another 15, 20 years or, or more. So, so this is a major change and a shift in events. Same thing for housing. Housing seen the second bubble even higher, and it's never never even been two bubbles in housing in a row, and nothing of this magnitude. And and I think housing prices will never, ever be as high as most developed countries have seen in this bubble for decades to come, unless you're in, in, in India or something. Well, I'm chatting today with Mr. Harry Dent. Uh, Harry is offering the listeners today a free newsletter. Go to harrydent.com to sign up. Again, the website is harrydent.com. Harry, if you listen to what uh, Chairman Powell said after the last Fed meeting, uh, he made it a point to say that they're not going to make a statement, say they're anticipating future rate increases, but instead they're they're going to look at the data. And I'm paraphrasing. Uh, is the Fed getting ready to go back and uh, really use the only tool they have left? And that is they're going to try to go back and ease again. Do you see them trying to you know go back to the well here? Oh, yeah, there's no question they'll have to ease again. But the Fed will not go from tightening, which, which I, I think the, 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 the forecast is and pretty much agreed on. They're going to pause, okay, next time. This, we've just seen the last rate hike, okay, for 14 months. And, and, and the, by, by the way, though, the highest increase in basis points we've seen back to the 70s and 80s. So, so this, was, this is going to have an impact. And people have to remember, Jim, the impact comes 12 months later. OK, so we're going to see the impact from now into May of next year is when this will be. It'll be felt the most a year from now. So so the economy is only going to get weaker. And, and that means stocks are, are going to have to get real and, and keep going down. And the more stocks go down, the more consumers and investors will get cautious. And then that that just feeds the down cycle. So I think that we're, we're clearly going down in the recession over the next year. And the stock market's going to have its middle wave. It's always three crashes it takes to finish a major uh, uh, downturn. We're going to go into that middle wave, which usually is the worst, from now into around the end of this year. And then we'll finish the last wave, you know, into uh, mid to late 2024 before we come out of this. So, So nobody should think this is over. Nobody should think this is a correction. They have put this off, Dennis. We, you know, for for 13 years now, we should have bottomed in 2010 instead of 2009. That correction should have gone farther. We should have dealt with debt back then, which we didn't at all because they stimulated us out. And we should have been in a sideways market in stock until about now and just be coming out of this. But now we have to pay the piper and flush out these debts and, and these high stock and, and real estate prices, which will only hinder future it's hard for the next young people, the millennials, to invest for the future or to afford a house when the baby boomers have bubbled them up so much and never let the bubble be corrected. So we have to get rid of this bubble. And nobody wants the pain of it, but there's no, there's no painless way for stock and real estate prices to come back down to normal because the people who own those, which are aging baby boomers, not the young millennials, good that's good for the economy because they're the spenders in the future, but there's no way without us baby boomers taking pain. So I tell baby boomers, it's real simple. You just got to get out of the way. You got to get out of stock and real estate that you, to the extent you can and wait for this natural reset back to down. And it's going to be down a lot, 50% in real estate. 70, 80, 90 percent in stocks from the top, you know, you have to wait for this to happen and then reinvest. You cannot sit through a crash of this magnitude. It's not a correction. You can sit through a 10, 20 percent correction. Do not sit through this 
And if I'm wrong, you'll know by the end of the year. Okay, so you're not going to have to be out long if I'm wrong and the market's just going to keep going up. But I'm telling you, odds of that are very slim. I do not see a new high uh, ahead, and I do see a substantial new low by the end of the year. If that's the case, that just shows this is major, and it shows you're going to have even more to come in 2024. Well, I'm chatting today with Harry Dent. He's offering the listeners a complimentary newsletter. It's a daily newsletter. You can sign up at harrydent.com. So, Harry, um, I ran across an article that was written in 1941 by a professor from a university. Both names escape me now, but uh, I was uh, really, uh, really, really astounded by the fact that when you look at the level of private sector debt that exists today as compared to 1929 at the beginning of the Great Depression, We've now exceeded that, and you, you led this segment by talking about debt. So well, when you talk about uh, that we're headed for recession, do you see the severity of this recession maybe equaling what we saw in the 1930s, given that debt levels are very comparable? You know, it, it, it should, except they're probably going to still try to be a common. I think they're going to lose credibility on constantly just printing more money since if we fail, you know, so quickly after they printed $10 trillion between fiscal and monetary in the last, you know, two years after COVID. So I, I, I think, yeah, yes. I mean, we're, we're going to see a similar downturn. I don't think it'll be 25% unemployment. It might be 15 to 16%. Uh, but stocks will end up down. I, my projection from the top, and, and this has been not recently, this has been before we even had the crash, that we would crash, you know, from the top 92% in the NASDAQ, and 86% in the S&P 500. And Dennis, all that is, the simplicity of that, we just go back and retest the 2009 lows, not that long ago. And in real estate, it's the same thing, except the last major low was mid-2012. So that, that and that, just going back to mid-2012 in real estate would take down the average house 50% more than the 34% we saw in the 2008-9. So again, this is a this is what I call the crash of a lifetime. This is what the Henry Ford generation saw from 1929 to 32. This is what we will see now. And then we will not see a bubble for decades. We won't see bubbles for decades and decades to come. And we will not see a crash of this magnitude, nor will our kids even have to worry about it. But it's it's going to happen now or not. And I say it's going to happen now. So if you <laughs> just just be safe for this year. And then if I'm right, you have to be safe for another year. But just just take the chance of being out of overvalued real estate and stock just for the rest of this year, you know, just six or seven months. By October, you'll know whether we're in a serious downturn or not. Well, my guest today is Mr. Harry Dent. He is offering the listeners a free newsletter. It's a daily newsletter. You can go to harrydent.com to sign up. Again, the website is harrydent.com. I'll continue my conversation with Harry Dent when RLA Radio returns. Stay with us. I'm Dennis Tubergen. You are listening to RLA Radio. My guest on today's program is best-selling author and economist, Mr. Harry Dent. Uh, I'm chatting with Harry about what's going on in the economy and getting his forecast moving ahead for stocks and real estate. If you're just joining us, you can get Harry's free newsletter by visiting the website harrydent.com. And, and Harry, you know, one of the things I think that stood out to me, if you're a 401k or IRA investor in, in, in 2022, you could lose money in both stocks and bonds, which, you know, are typically the funds that, that most people have as options in the 401k with, you know, some, some derivations on those themes. Um, what's your forecast moving ahead for bonds? Okay, so, so the, it's the corporate bonds that go down because they have default risk. E even high quality, you know, A to triple A bond will have a little bit of risk. And of course, you go B and down to C, then, then they, they will start trading not quite as bad as stocks, but you can have corporate bonds go down as much as 50%. It is what the, the, the exception is the highest quality U.S. government treasury bond. I know the government's in debt and all that sort of stuff. People saying, oh, our government's going to go back. No, they they can print money to stimulate the economy. They can print money to pay their bonds. They are not, and I mean not, defaulting on their bonds, no matter what, even if they have to argue over these, you know, you know, limits here and debt limits and stuff, temporary and stuff. That, that won't last. So that is the safe haven. 
Now, other people like me who say we were in the biggest debt bubble in history and there's going to be the, a, a big crash, people like Peter Schiff and the gold bugs, they say, oh, the safe haven's gold. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, Peter. <laughs> Guess what went down 40 to 50 percent literally in a matter of months? The last thing to go down in the 2008 crash was gold, but it went down hard. Gold was not the safe haven, not the worst place to be compared to stocks and other risk assets, but it did go down seriously as well. The safe haven was back then the U.S. long-term treasury bonds, a 30-year treasury bond. The longest duration is your best friend in this crash, and there are a number of easy-to-buy ETFs like TLT um, and, and TMF if you want to be 3x leveraged. Uh, that, that you can buy that will go up substantially. I mean, TLT could almost double in value in the next year and a half or so. I Actually, not quite that, but it, it, I think at 103 or something, I my target is 186 on TLT. So that's going to be, you know, a, a 75, 80% return on the safest asset in the world, treasury bonds. And that only happens as a safe haven play in a major crash. So that's the only place to go. People say, well, where else, what else can I do? Nothing. You know, if you're in real estate and you're in affordable rental buildings, okay, those will hold up, but, but nothing else will, will hold up. Well, real estate's going to go down largely across the board. Stocks are going to go down across the board. This is a great reset. So you just get out of the way for, like I said, for about a year and a half, that's all it's going to take. So just get out of the way. And, and if I'm wrong, you might miss 5 or 10% on the upside at this overvaluation level. If I'm right, you're going to save your assets, okay? <laughs> well, I'm chatting to you with Harry Dent. He's offering a free daily newsletter to the listeners. It's available at harrydent.com. Harry, you know, uh, another uh, big issue is going to be the level of commercial real estate mortgages that are going to refinance here over the next 18 to 24 months. Uh, there's already... Massive levels of bank of, of, of vacancies, rather in, uh, in in office buildings in large cities, uh, you know, New York, uh, San Francisco, Chicago. Uh, that trend seems to be accelerating. Um, how much of a headwind will this uh, commercial real estate be on uh, on this reset? Well, you know, Dennis, that this is the worst sector because all real estate's overvalued. Okay. Uh, in this bubble, but commercial real estate has a second factor in that it's being devalued because more and more COVID forced this move back to home work. Companies hate it. I don't blame them. I some people are more productive at home. I'm worked at home since 1989. Okay, but 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 that is going to reduce the need for commercial real estate. Commercial is the worst sector, so they are going to get hit the hardest here. And and nobody's going to need to build commercial real estate substantially for decades to come. So so yeah, if you got investments in commercial real estate, that's that's the first, that's the, the, the best place to get out of. So Harry, what advice would you have for someone today that uh, maybe is thinking about uh, selling their home and buying a vacation home somewhere uh, when they retire or relocating when they retire? Uh, is this the kind of environment where you'd say, hey, uh, sell what you have while you can and then just rent for a while and see what happens? Yeah, what, what I, kind I of hate advice to say it, yeah, the degree, and this is so severe. This is a once-in-a-lifetime event, and, and actually twice in a lifetime, which is rare, but bigger than the one we saw from 2006 to 12. Uh, so, so I'd say sell any real estate you can, even your primary home, and a lot of aging baby boomers or at the point where their kids have left the nest and they got a bunch of empty bedrooms anyway, and they're thinking about buying a vacation home. So the, so the best strategy, sell your main home now. I mean, quick, because this is going to happen soon. And you wait about a year or two and then start looking to rebuy a vacation home. Vacation homes will get hit harder. Now, if you do have a vacation home already, well, then you need that less. That, that, that's the one to sell the most if you have one, because it will go down the most and it will be the slowest to come back at first. So, so, so get out of all real estate. But yes, the ideal with like the average person just in a house and looking to get a vacation or a retirement home, sell your main home now and wait about two years, give or take, 
to to rebuy when the markets are down. And and then real estate also stays down longer than stocks. So you're going to have plenty of time to shop for that perfect retirement home or vacation home once this is over for stocks. If you don't buy near the bottom, you know, it, it'll run around and leave you. But, but real estate stocks in the 2009 bottom in stocks, that was March of 2009, real estate didn't bottom until mid-2012 roughly. So, so you had three extra years to shop for real estate bargains. So, Harry, a lot of time uh, when you're on the program, we talk about your demographic research, which I think is uh, fascinating. And once you explain it, it is uh, it is so logical. And, and uh, you know, I'll let you explain that briefly. But uh, is there some good news out here for the U.S. based on yeah, your you demographic know, research? Yeah, it's so simple. It's stupid. I hate this. I mean, economists just miss. Because it, we never had good information on demographics until the last couple of decades. But people enter the workforce. Here, here's how simple. The average person, just like dying, enters the workforce at 20 and spends the most money at 46. So, so you know when people are going to enter. And that's when inflation peaks, the cost of raising them and incorporating them. And that's when the productivity curve starts for, for, for better earnings and when the growth in, in sales and earnings and, and economy grows. And so you get you get a boom as people are moving, increasing numbers from 20 to 46. Well, that's and I, I was saying this way back in the 80s, that, that, that the baby boomers were going to cause the greatest boom in history from eight, 1983. And it's going to peak in late 2007. And then we're going to have a slow period into 2022, 23. Well, we did have that peak. We did have a Great Depression-like downturn in 2008 that looked exactly like 1930. Why Ben Bernanke? turned on the printing presses. His whole thesis was in the Great Depression. He knew 2008 was 1930. And so they just tried to stop a depression. Well, it's not good business to stop a depression. A depression has to deflate a bubble and excess debt and excess financial asset prices for you to be able to go into the next boom profitably. So they put this off. We're going to have to pay the piper, I say, in the next few years. And then the millennials will drive us up from 2025 to 37 in the next boom, and then, you know, an inflation will go back. We will never, Dennis, see serious inflation for the rest of our lives, any of us, including our kids. Inflation is done, okay? They blew it up just for this bubble, just, just to stimulate. This is temporary inflation. So we're going to have a, 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 another boom with near zero inflation from 2025 to 37, but we got to clear out the wreckage here first. And it will be painful. And, and again, I'm predicting the S&P 500 will be down 86% from the top top in, in early to January 2022 for this sober and the NASDAQ 92%. Do not sit through this downturn. It will, you will never recover from it. And stocks will never get to these bubble highs. The millennials only bring us back to the same level of economic activity because they're not as strong or big a generation, and, and we will not see bubbles after this. So stocks will never get as high as they've gotten in this bubble. The rest of any of our lifetime in real estate certainly will not get as high. So, so it, it, you know, the only way to profit is to let these things go down and buy at much lower prices. Then it's okay, but don't expect that you hold your stocks and they'll be higher 20 years from now, they will not be. And you will suffer huge losses. So Harry, when you say 86% on the S&P 500 uh, down from the peak, that, that's a number that is just almost unfathomable. Uh, well, about what number does that give you on the S&P 500 that's now a little over 4,000? I think it's a 670. Yeah, but what, the best way to do, go back and look at the lows in March of 2009. And, and that's that's what it'll be. It it is astounding numbers. Uh, actually, I think it's six seventy on the on the Nasdaq, and I think it's four hundred ish on the S and P. But I I don't have the number on the top here. But I'm telling you, it is it that is devastating. You don't. It takes forever. Well, again, you'll never get back to highs. But even in a normal bull market, it would from if you'd have gotten out if you'd have after the twenty nine crash, it would have taken twenty four years just to get back to that top. Uh, and the same thing after the 1968 highs and the next boom in stocks, it would have taken 25 years to get back just to even if you held. So 
So I'm telling people, trust me for one year. If I'm wrong, you'll lose a little. And gain, if I'm right, you will save uh, a fortune, okay? It will make all the difference in your life. And, and, and again, if this is going to happen, we'll know by the end of the year because this has already been stretched about as far as it can be stretched. The Fed was forced to tighten by their overstimulus in COVID, which they didn't need to do. It was a temporary crisis. And so this is the time period where, it's gonna, where they're going to lose control and the bubble's going to continue to burst uh, before they can really stimulate enough again to turn it around. And they'll, and they'll be slow to react. They're always late. So this is the time it will happen. So it will... This is the year to be out. And again, remember, if we're down to new lows by the end of this year, which I expect us to be, then they'll, we'll keep going down in 2024. And then the time to reinvest will probably be in the second half of 2024, not before then. Well, my guest today has been Mr. Harry Dent. If you'd like to sign up for his free daily newsletter, go to harrydent.com. The website, again, harrydent.com. Harry, always a pleasure to catch up with you. I appreciate your perspective. Love to have you back down the road, and thank you for joining us today. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. We will return after these words. I'm Dennis Tubergen. You're listening to RLA Radio, and thanks again to my special guest, Mr. Harry Dent, for joining me on today's program. If you're just tuning in, I am offering a special report for the month of May titled IRA and 401k Strategies. In the report, you will get some tax saving strategies to consider for your situation, some investing strategies. Once you reach the age of 59 and a half in your 401k, I'd invite you to get the report by visiting the website requestyourreport.com. When you get to the site, you'll just be asked to give the address you'd like the report sent to. And along with the report, you'll get a copy of my best selling revenue sourcing book, a copy of the Little Black Book on Social Security Maximization as well as some bonus information. It will all be sent to you absolutely free with no future obligation. Again, the website is requestyourreport.com. Well, are we going into recession? Are we in a recession? What does that mean for you? Well, Janet Yellen, the Treasury Secretary, just last month made this statement, quote, the U.S. economy is obviously performing exceptionally well with continued solid job creation, inflation gradually moving down, robust consumer spending. I'm not anticipating a downturn in the economy. Well, let me tell you that Ms. Yellen, as chair of the Fed, also told us that inflation would be transitory. Since she was wrong about that, is she right about the fact that we will not see a downturn in the economy? I don't think so. Of course, Ms. Yellen is not alone in her making predictions that were not true, and this latest one, I believe, will not end up being true. Ben Bernanke, as chair of the Fed, told us that the subprime mortgage crisis would be contained. That, of course, also proved not to be true. So I happen to think that we are headed into a recession. In fact, I believe that the data is starting to show that we are now in a recession. I mean, if you simply take a look at some of the data, well, let's just look at mortgage originations, for example. And look, let's look at mortgage originations for those that have a really good credit score, say 760 or above. So these are the people that have the best possible credit. If you go back to the first quarter of 2021 and you compare the number of mortgage originations among those with a 760 credit score and higher, to the first quarter of 2023. So we're doing a two-year comparison. We're looking at the number of mortgage originations among those with a 760 plus credit score in the first quarter of 2021 and comparing that to the first quarter of 2023. And we find that mortgage originations are down about 80%. Auto loans, 
something similar. If we look at those with a 760 credit score and higher, and we look at the number of mortgage originations from the first quarter, excuse me, the number of auto loan originations by those in that group two years ago compared to today, we have auto loan originations down about 20%. And what about loan delinquencies? What about those who are having a hard time making their payments that are now delinquent on their loans? Well, the number of mortgage loan delinquencies from the first quarter of 2021 as compared to the first quarter of 2023 up around 15% or so using round numbers. Credit card delinquencies, and keep in mind, credit card debt is near an all-time high. The number of credit card holders that are delinquent on their payments up about 50% since the first quarter of 2021. That's a huge number. Auto loan delinquencies up about a third since the first quarter of 2021. So what do you have here? That gives you a pretty interesting picture as to what's going on in the economy, doesn't it? You've got those that are credit worthy, that presumably have assets, that have done a really good job managing their finances, that are not buying real estate, mortgage originations down about 80%. They're not buying cars and financing them anyway. Auto loan originations down about 20%. And at the same time, when you look at delinquencies, on existing loans among the general population, they are up across the board. This does not suggest that the economy will not have a downturn. It seems that the economy is already in a downturn, and it seems to defy Ms. Yellen's statement that she's not anticipating a downturn in the economy. You just heard me talk to Harry Dent. His take is that we're going to see a significant significant decline in stock values. We're going to see a significant decline in real estate values. Harry quoted some numbers. Well, I certainly uh, don't quote numbers. I believe that Harry is on target with his position that stocks are going to be lower and real estate is going to go lower as well. So if you're planning for retirement, I believe that you're going to have to use strategies that are going to be different than the strategies that were used in the past. I believe a lot of the traditional retirement planning tools, a lot of the traditional investing that people have done to prepare for retirement and during retirement are about to fail many aspiring retirees. That's why every month here on this program, I offer a brand new special report. And as I said at the outset of this segment, the May 2023 special report is titled IRA and 401k Strategies. I'd like to invite you to get a copy of that report absolutely free. All you need to do to get it is go to requestyourreport.com. The website, again, is requestyourreport.com. When you let me know where to mail that report, I will mail you the report as well as some bonus information. You'll get a free copy of my revenue sourcing book. The revenue sourcing book contains a retirement planning strategy for the post-pandemic economy. I'll send you a, also send you a copy of the Social Security Maximization Book. Again, go to requestyourreport.com. Let me know where to mail all that stuff, and I'll be very glad to do so. That's all the time I have for this week, but I'll be back again next week. Have a great week.